What's up? And welcome to season two. No hoodies at Uniqlo. Head out somewhere. Welcome back to the channel. A lot has happened since the start of season one. If you all, for those of you who are returning, you remember it was on April 1st, 2021. It was started as a bit of a practical joke, right? A Twitter meme that went out of control. That today is a symbol, a symbol of community, a symbol of meaning to the people who um, sort of grew with this market. And for those of you who are new here, I am talking about NFTs, I am talking about Web3, I am talking about the metaverse. It's always fun to be at the start of a hype cycle. Clearly, there is something huge here. And what I do want to talk to you about specifically is you in NFTs. Most people are doing this alone with their own money that they have earned, right? Using their own information, kind of directly interacting with the market, not really shielded um, through a company or something like that. And in this video, um, I'm going to be talking about some of the things that you should probably consider if you are planning to stay long term. And I will also talk a little bit about my experiences with this year. Um, I can tell you at a very broad level, this has been the, one of the craziest years of my life. One of the best years is what I mean by that. Uh, but also one of the worst. Um, Shit has gotten a little dystopian for me at times. Shit has gotten a little demotivating. I hope I'm able to share that with you. And I hope uh, if you're going through something similar, you will resonate with some of that. probably give this 24 hours to dry but we want to make the hoodie today we want to make it right now in this park we've gone through that entire process together Dude, I love this. This is so good. I loved it. What I also like, here we are. Here I am in the bro hoodie. The, probably the very first bro hoodie. I do have some bro t-shirts. This is the very first bro hoodie. And what I also like about this is I was able to get a really good blank. So let me tell you the story, right? Um, I wasn't narrating back then, but I went to Uniqlo first. I thought I would get a nice blank hoodie from there. The thing about hoodies and the thing about 
designing hoodies is getting a high quality blank is like half of your job or more than half of your job right beyond that you are designing it you are figuring out what how you want to style it but a good quality hoodie it's one of those things that if you if you if you ever by chance buy ever buy a really high quality hoodie all other hoodies are just spoiled for you right so the main thing to look for is of course the material you want it to be thick right um and now dude i don't know since when i became a fashion influencer but i guess that's what it is that's what it is we are talking about this right now let me show you this really cute dog that's across me in the park right now Here are some things I believe about the crypto market. After having spent uh, some time passively observing last couple of years, maybe, but as an active participant as well. Number one, it's very very difficult for casual observers to understand what is going on because there is enormous depth in each of the each of the areas that you might get into. There is enormous width. which is there are a lot of new areas right whether that might be defi whether you want to understand how you want to yield farm whether you want to understand how to invest in nfts whether you want to understand just general trading whether you want to understand how to read charts daos social tokens metaverse applications play to earn games blockchain gaming there are a lot of areas it, it's getting wider and wider and wider and deeper and deeper and deeper and with composability maybe i'll talk about that in a separate video all of these things actually do connect with each other it's getting very hard for the casual observer and for somebody who is also trying to make a space um trying to make trying to let's just say spend more time into crypto if that's one of the things you want to do which is spend more time in crypto and web3 this year um you know you want to allocate time for it i will say that allocating time for it is absolutely needed right it's a separate thing that really takes up your a lot of your attention and i'll talk about the negative sides of that and how it relates to burnout but um, you really really need a high or let me just say this the people who are doing really really well in the space are really fast learners and they're able to absorb all of this information synthesize it and then take actions right it's very very overwhelming for somebody who is not used to this kind of high frequency high information environment so i will say that as a word of caution that it's very difficult primarily for this reason where that because there is so much information and there is financial incentive attached with it which is if somebody is tweeting about a project you can be damn sure that they own that project right they they've invested or they've put some amount of their crypto into that project or there are other financial or social motives to it so it's getting very hard for um, casual observers and for hardcore crypto degens <laughs> very um, popularly used term degen let me just um, turn the fucking heat up for a sec degen degenerative it's not a fucking joke this is some fucked up shit man <laughs> this is not a fucking joke degenerative is a bad thing um i know the term degens is just commonly used and that's that's a fun thing i will say that but in general i really want you to consider if you are a hardcore crypto enthusiast at the moment or are planning to become one whether you really have what it takes to not let that degenerative behavior catch up to the rest of your life degeneration in terms of your motivation degeneration in terms of your creativity degeneration in terms of your willingness to put in hard work to get things done because based on my own experiences and my conversations with people who are um traders 
whether that's NFTs or um, other stuff like stocks, commodities, forex, and that kind of stuff, is that trading is a very addictive game, and it really messes up your sense of reward to work ratio, right? Your let's just say your reward to effort ratio, which is when you get a taste or when you get a feeling or when you internalize that it is possible to make a ton of money through a risky trade a ton of money through minting some kind of random nft project a ton of money through flipping right and when i say ton of money of course that is subjective right it's not the same for everybody but you do graduate in terms of levels when you do that that is almost like a quick financial gratification i'm pretty sure you are very familiar with um how social media actually demotivates you at some time right um doom scrolling or just pulling to refresh or just posting stuff just to get validation it's happened to all of us right and it's not a it's not a rare thing anymore but that is also a form of instant gratification you're getting validation through this medium this platform that has created these incentives right a web2 platform let's say a social media platform let's say we're talking about instagram or twitter they have created incentives for you to post content and you get validations through likes comments through people that reach out now of course the amazing part is that i get to talk to you i get to talk to my friends i get to connect with people but the negative part is when i start relying on social media as my primary source of validation as my primary source to get dopamine hits and everything else looks difficult as a result and i'm not just talking about social media here i'm talking about technology in general we've seen that in web 2 we are also seeing that in web 3 which is when you know you can make a degen fucking trade and you can make more money with that one trade than you make in a week a month a year that does some very interesting things to your psyche that um throws off your sense of work effort and reward that makes it lesser and lesser likely that you put in the effort for long term things that have a delayed payoff a delayed gratification because when you have the option of instant gratification you will always go for it right when you know that you can feel good through this method versus um let's just say something that takes a much longer time which is whether that's setting up your business working on a project right maybe you're a builder a builder and an investor that these are two types of mindsets that are always at odds the more you build the less you want to just like speculate and do this random stuff because you get joy you feel good about building something and seeing progress that's your personal progress that's maybe your team's progress that's also your product's progress that feels really good and not just for builders but even content creators you feel good when you go out and you make something and you put it out and you're able to impact people's lives but an investor mindset right a speculator mindset it can get to the point to a point where you might not even realize it but what you're doing is you're hacking your own body's reward function right you are going for the quick hits rather than the long term wins and that is always something to be mindful of right it's for those of you who are new to the space and maybe are experiencing this for the first time what you are doing is you are participating in the market typically when you are employed you get some kind of cushion from the market right and i'm not making any judgments here right i think it's great to be employed it's great to do it to be a solopreneur it's great to be a creator it's great to if you want to do your own thing or start your own business or if you just want to be in crypto right no judgments there but typically when you are in a company you are shielded from the market when you run your own business when you're a freelancer when you're a, maybe a content creator and especially when you're trading nfts you're directly exposed to the market what that means is there are waves of supply and there are waves of demand right now this changes based on time frame as well whether a project has just launched whether there is some other information or alpha that that can put you ahead of the supply demand curves or before it you are directly interacting with the market and i can tell you this um it can be brutal at times 
it can be really brutal at times because no matter how good your decision making capabilities are which is what this comes down to your decision making capabilities nobody else will trigger that trade for you nobody else will make that decision for you directly interacting with the market can be pretty brutal um and it can also set up the wrong habits now talking about burnout that is to give you a very personal example um last year was really good for me with without giving too many personal details um i got to move here i am now living with my wife i right? we got married um my business my main um design coaching business is doing really good right we had the best year yet um of course i discovered nfts as well but it's also been the worst year for me um in terms of moving to a new place um dealing with a lot of um let's just say back end work around that um when it comes to my company as well as personal um not having the motivation anymore right to me the way i see it is building a business is a long term activity it takes time it takes time for you to um refine your offering to have the time to iterate and find something that works for the market um to even have setups whether that's your company setup how you want to your business models the people that you have the plans that you have your own road map when it comes to the company your own um auditing of how you want to let's just say what are the metrics you want to track and how you want to track growth it's a very long term activity that requires focus it requires you to be really focused on the things that are important and besides that of course um if you are running a business like mine you are responsible for teaching right i am responsible for not just teaching people not just educating myself to get better but also to constantly invest in learner experience constantly invest in myself to make sure that as the demands on me increase i am upskilling myself to respond to it now all that is great right and that's something i love to do i really love to do it but when you have something like nfts where you are interacting with the market where it's um a lot of times as when you're a speculator you're buying these tokens you are somewhat emotionally tied to an outcome right whether that's the floor price and that you're refreshing you're constantly refreshing to see what your floor price is whether that's your portfolio you're constantly refreshing opening it every single day every single hour to see how that's changed or you're thinking about what your next trade is going to be you're thinking about hey should i buy now is it going to go down is it going to go up hey i bought this yesterday now it's gone up that's good for me but it's gone down so that's bad for me um you are always trying to time the market and i will just say this you are interacting with a global market where there are people who are way smarter than you with a lot more experience and if you're not careful you might be eaten by sharks right this is not a local market where you're just interacting with people around you right this is the global market it's the world it's at a scale that we cannot imagine so to be an individual where you are trying to time the market it's a very stressful activity and what i will say is make sure you're protecting your downside what i mean by that is the number one thing that's important that i have personally found and this is common advice at this point i think is you need to survive right rather than timing where oh i can sell now and i can buy now and oh my god should i mint this should i not that is great right but zoom out what's way more important is whether you can survive in the market right more than timing time in the market is what's really important here which is if you do all of this stuff but you don't have let's say a fiat source of income right you don't have any um money for your real world expenses that can be a problem or if you're so involved in this to the point where you are alienating yourself to the point of where people don't understand you to maybe you are you feel like you're going crazy um see these are all hypotheticals okay um i'm just like trying to make a point 
that you need to really protect your downside, whether that's financial, whether that's peace of mind, whether that is um, in terms of your social needs, because um, this shit is not easy. Okay, I will just say that this shit is not easy. Besides that, on a more personal front, um, I don't really want to do crypto and NFT content, bros. I'll be um, very honest with you. One of my main reasons for it is, let's just say whenever I do something, I try to do it for a long time. And with this, I don't really, I don't really know if I want to become a crypto, if I want to publicly be known for crypto. While I love helping people out, while I, while teaching, coaching, and just a little bit of guidance, like that's, I love doing that. That's very uh, satisfying to me to be able to do that. Primarily for design, but for crypto as well. I personally don't want to get to a point where that's my main thing. And I think that's all I'll say for now. So, thank you for watching. My final note to you is just that NFTs and crypto do tend to become slot machines at some point. And um, we all know the addictions that come with gambling. I don't, I don't think I need to explain that, although I think I have a little bit. Um, so really be careful and if your ambition is to become a builder in the space, whether that's a creator or a programmer or any builder of any sort, keep in mind that it might be really difficult for you to balance that speculative gambling gen kind of side uh, versus just investing where you may be doing it with a thesis and really heads down building. So see you in the next video.